Australia is fast becoming a body conscious nation. With us Aussies spending over a billion dollars each year on cosmetic injectables and minimally invasive procedures, it is time for me, your host, Dr. Nora, to give you the lowdown on things you should consider before getting those lips filled. Before you go spending that hard-earned cash on those beautiful lips, have a think about my first tip, which is what exactly do you want to achieve? Very often I'll get patients coming through my door saying, Doc, I just want really big, bold, beautiful lips. Make them for me. And it's super easy for us to think about what we want to achieve. However, you are the patient and you need to think about what it is that you like in a lip. What do you like aesthetically? What makes a lip beautiful for you? Take a think about the shape of the lips that you want to achieve. Do you want to have symmetrical lips? So traditionally, the golden ratio of lips is 1 to 1.6, which is where the upper lip is slightly thinner than the lower lip. This used to be very beautiful and it still is considered beautiful in terms of lips. But because of social media changes, we're now looking at more of a 1 to 1 ratio, which is where we have symmetry in the upper and the lower lip. Have a look for yourself. See, is this something that you think will suit your face? Think about the shape of your lips in terms of whether you want to accentuate your cupid's bow. Do you want more volume? Do you want a bit more definition in your lips? Why are you having your lips done in the first place? Is it simply to help you look more hydrated, more youthful? Or is it to help you put your lipstick on? Because often we tend to see that patients who lose the definition of their upper lips or even their lower lips, they may start to bleed their lipstick, which means that the lipstick trapes through the upper lip and so it causes a bleeding effect if you like. And we can help to reverse this with using some lip filler, which helps to increase the definition of the lip and hence reduce the amount of bleeding of lipstick. Have a look at some reference pictures. Very often I tell my patients to come back with some market research and take a look at five or six different lips that they love the look of. And this will help me as a cosmetic practitioner to find out what your mind is set on. It will help me to see whether or not it is actually a realistic expectation for you to get that lip or whether we can work towards this in say one or maybe two sessions. Take me for example, when I first started having my lips done, my upper lip was super, super, super thin. I really wanted to kind of increase the size of it. I wanted to make the focus of my face more on my lips rather than the other areas of my face, my nose, my eyes, etc. And so what I did is I knew that it wouldn't be possible for me to get a bigger upper lip from the first treatment. Instead, it would have taken me a couple of goes before I get that nice symmetry that I'm looking for. And yes, lo and behold, I've got to my perfect result at the moment. So you should know that it's going to take a little bit of time. But having that reference picture to show to your cosmetic practitioner will help them to understand what your goals are and give us an idea of how long our journey will be together. In saying that, it is also super important to consider my next tip. That's tip number two, beware of limitations. I'll often get patients coming in to me saying, Doc, I just want the whole shebang. Give me three mils, give me four mils. And this is simply a no-go zone. Generally speaking, lip fillers should only be done in one mil graduations apart. And usually it should be done at least two to four weeks between treatments. This gives your lip the time to expand in its growth. It allows for the product to integrate naturally into your natural collagen, your connective tissue itself. If we put too much lip filler in at once, it really doesn't make the lip look very pretty. It distorts the lip shape. It can even cause migration in some people, which means that the product will migrate to other areas of the face and that gives you lumps and bumps in areas other than your lips. So it's super important that we go slow and steady. And there will be some cases where the lip simply just can't grow anymore. And if we put more filler into the lip, it just won't look right. And so it's really important for you to have this discussion with your cosmetic practitioner to find out whether or not your lips can actually grow to a bigger size, or whether you are limited to say maybe one or two mils. And it might be that over time you can expand your lip. Perhaps it might take a year or two for your lips to increase in size, for you to achieve that nice goal that you wanted to get in the first place. And you've got a gorgeous pout as well. Your so, pout is just phenomenal. It's, it's, it's Okay, so you've now researched the perfect, beautiful lip and you're now ready to pull the trigger and get those lips done. My third tip for you guys is to ensure that you know exactly what is involved in a lip filler treatment. Lip fillers are a cosmetic procedure. That means that they are minimally invasive. That means that there is a needle going into your skin. These procedures should not be trivialized in any means, shape or form. Yes, we may see things on TikTok, we may see things on Instagram, but they are still cosmetic procedures that carry risks. And this must be really important for you guys to understand out there because they aren't simply things that you can get done in the back street, alley or a shop next door. It really must be done by an adequately qualified medical health professional because there are risks associated with it. Lip fillers themselves can be uncomfortable. Your cosmetic practitioner may choose to use some uh, anaesthetic cream on the lips or they may choose to use other different types of local anaesthetic as well, such as a dental block. 
The lip filler itself usually does contain a bit of local anesthetic in it, but in saying this, they are uncomfortable. It is a procedure that will make your lips swell up. Your lips will swell up pretty much the next day and they'll continue to swell for a couple of days thereafter until about three to five days where things tend to settle down. There will certainly be some bruising as well. So if you're about to go out and you're about to have some dinner with your mates, probably don't arrange to have your lip filler done on that day. You should be aware that lip fillers do take around two weeks for them to fully integrate into your natural skin itself. So your final optimal result won't be visible until about two weeks on. And also bearing in mind the swelling and the bruises will last about three to five days after you've had your procedure. So by having a brief overview as to what actually is involved in your lip filler will help you to decide when you want to get that lip filler done. And generally speaking, we tend to recommend that if you've got a big event coming up, for example, your own wedding, <laughs> you definitely, definitely, definitely do not want to be doing your lips the day before or two days before. And generally speaking, we tend to recommend you as cosmetic practitioners to get any cosmetic procedures done at least six weeks prior to your big event. This will allow time for things to settle down, for bruising to settle, for any kind of complications that may have arise also to settle and to be handled as well in a timely fashion. So make sure that when you're considering your lips and you're booking in that appointment, make sure you've got your time on lock and when you want to have your treatment compared to when you might have that event coming up. Going on from the procedure itself, my next tip for you guys is to make sure that you're aware of the different type of fillers that are available on the market. Now in Australia, we have a huge variety of fillers. Some are good, some are average, and some are really good. And your cosmetic practitioner, hopefully if you've chosen the right one, will be able to advise you of what's the best type of filler for yourself. For me personally, I do recommend getting something called a hyaluronic acid filler. Now this is a filler that is not permanent in nature. Now this helps you in the future because if, for example, say you want to reverse your lips or say, for example, a cosmetic complication occurred, we can easily do that. We cannot unfortunately reverse permanent fillers and generally speaking, they tend to carry a lot more risks and side effects with them. And so generally in Australia, you'll tend to see practitioners who commonly use hyaluronic acid fillers, which are non-permanent and they can last you anywhere between six to nine months in the lips. The idea of hyaluronic acid is that we naturally produce hyaluronic acid in our own skin, in our own connective tissue. Hyaluronic acid helps keep our skin nice and plump, voluminous, hydrated looking. And so when we inject it into our lips or other places of our face, it helps maintain the hydration, that volume that we're looking for, that plumpness, that youthful appearance. Now, because this is a man-made version of hyaluronic acid, it takes a bit of time for it to integrate into your own natural hyaluronic acid. And that process can take about two to four weeks in total. And that's why we do suggest that it can take up to a month for your overall final result to be visible on your face. In saying that, there are different grades of filler. Now, some of these fillers can be really soft, and this could be something that you can use in the tear troughs, for example, or they could be slightly thicker, giving a bit more projection, a bit more volume, or they can be super thick. However, we don't necessarily put in the thickest amount of filler into your lips because let's face it, if you've got a really thick product in your lips, you will not be able to move those lips. So generally speaking, the thickest filler is usually reserved for areas like the cheeks or the jawline where we want to get that optimal projection and there's not a lot of movement in the face. Whereas for the lips, for example, we may go for a softer or a more medium thickness filler, which will help just keep that projection and that volume on the lips. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but of course, don't get too bogged down if you don't know all of the ins and outs of all of the hyaluronic acid fillers on the market because surely your own cosmetic practitioner should be able to guide you through this process. Which takes me over quite nicely to my next point, which is research your cosmetic provider as much as possible. I cannot, cannot, cannot stress this enough. Guys, it is super important to make sure that you're going to somebody who is adequately trained in these cosmetic procedures. It is quite easy for somebody like Scully, Mr. Scully over here, to pick up a needle and inject your face. However, you need to be comforted that that cosmetic practitioner knows the anatomy of the face. Do they know where to inject? Do they know what to do if a complication arises? And like we said earlier, cosmetic procedures do carry risks. And for example, if we inject into the lips where we block off an arterial supply, it can cause cell death. Does that practitioner know how to reverse that? Because that is a super serious risk. Does your cosmetic practitioner have an artistic eye? Do they have a flair for this kind of thing? Or are they more like a butcher? Have a chat to your friends. See if they know a cosmetic practitioner that they have personally experienced themselves. Very often word of mouth can be the best form of recommendation. Having somebody that you can trust that has been through a cosmetic practitioner is a good step forward to finding yourself somebody that you can trust with your own face. 
And when you get to see that cosmetic practitioner, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask if they are adequately trained. Don't be afraid to see their certificates if you want to. Don't be afraid to ask them how many procedures they've done. Don't be afraid to ask all of those questions that you have on, the, on your mind about the actual procedure itself. Perhaps bring in a list with you and see if they can answer those questions. If you feel comfortable and they're confident in their responses, then hopefully you can trust that practitioner and you can move forward to getting your beautiful lips injected. Which leads me on to my next tip for you guys is to trust your provider. Hurrah, you have found someone that you love, you love their work, they're clever, they're skilled, they know exactly what they're doing, they, they know how to deal with complications, they've answered all of your questions beautifully. It is now time to put your trust in that practitioner. Practitioners like those people have got tons of experience and they will know what is good for you and what is not so good for you. For example, they'll be able to advise you as to what would look good for your face and what might not look so good. If, for example, they say to you, you know what, one mil of filler is better for you than say three mils of filler in that area because X, Y, and Z, Perhaps you should take their word for it and just go with what they're saying because sometimes we might think as the consumer, we might think that we want something, but in fact, someone with a lot more experience may know that that's not necessarily the best thing for us. And it might be that over time you develop that relationship and you work out why it is that that practitioner didn't offer you that in the first place. And so having that ability to communicate with your practitioner and trust their judgment is super important when you're thinking about getting anything done such as your lips. It is because I can see what she looked like before, I can tell what the angle is and that's really important because if I put the camera too high, the bottom lip looks bigger and if I conversely put it too low, the top lip looks bigger as well. So it's really important to get it centered and the application does have an internal logistics that actually tells me the analysis of the camera angle as well. So here we can see it's zero. My next tip for you guys is to document your progress. Now, I can't stress this enough. We as humans often forget what we look like. As soon as we're given a mirror after a cosmetic procedure, we literally think that nothing's changed because we've forgotten how we look like before. And so in my clinic, I make sure that I take before and after pictures and I use an application called Treatment Pad to do this. It helps me to take quick, accurate pictures before and after. With a click of a button, I can generate an awesomely zoomed in picture to show to my patient. And I will recommend this to my patients as well because they will notice, for example, after they've had their lip fillers or even after anti-wrinkle treatments that they may not necessarily see the change straight away but when they come back in two weeks time they do another picture they're like wow this is such a big change so have fun with it document your progress show it off to your friends you've gone through this beautiful procedure and you got this fantastic result at the end of it show it off make sure you enjoy it have a look at that famous pout we all want to see the pout <laughs> My next tip for you guys is once you've had your lip fillers, hooray, congratulations, you've taken your pictures, yippee. <laughs> it is time now to follow your aftercare instructions to the T. It is super important for you guys to make sure that you don't touch your lips or play with them. Now this is so very, very, very tempting. And I often see my patients immediately reaching for their lips and I say, hold up, don't do that because your lips have been molded in a beautiful way. We wanna maintain that structure. So if you go ahead and you start rubbing them, you can move that lip filler away from the area that it's been designated to be injected into. It's also really important to avoid anything on the lips such as makeup over the next 24 hours so that we reduce the chance of any infection. In addition to this we also ask you to keep nice and hydrated because lip fillers love water and so by having lots of water it keeps them nice and plump and hydrated. We'll also advise you to avoid any excess heat as well because lip fillers just don't like heat. So it is so important for you guys to follow your aftercare instructions to make sure that we get that perfect result in a few weeks time. One thing I bet you guys didn't know is that injecting the lips can actually help to change the structure of the face itself. Very often I'll get patients coming to me saying, Dr. Nora, I just simply do not like the look of my nose. Is there anything I can do other than injecting my nose with filler that will help to take away the focus from my nose onto somewhere else in my body? And the answer is a simple yes. When we inject the lips, the structure of our face changes. When we inject our lips, for example, the upper lip, what happens is we notice that there usually tends to be a shortening of our filtrum columns. And this has an, a net impact onto our nose and it actually makes it look a bit smaller. And so rather than the nose being the feature or the focus of the face, the lips are now the focus and it helps to change the dynamics of the face. My final tip for you guys is to enjoy your beautiful new lips. Now that you've gone through the process of seeing what kind of lips you want, you've had a look at all of the best practitioners in the world and you've gone to the best person who understands you, who knows exactly what to do, who's well qualified, 
who knows the ins and outs of the anatomy of the face and how to deal with complications. You've documented your progress. You've endured the bruising, the swelling, the inflammation that lip fillers have to do. It is now time to flaunt your brand new lips to the world. Whether you had it done for purely a self-esteem or a, a confidence boosting reason, or perhaps even you just wanted to apply your makeup without it bleeding into your face, or whether or not you just want to change the focus of your face, it is now time to congratulate yourself tap yourself on the back and say, yes, I did this. And remember guys, that any cosmetic procedure does carry its own risks and that you should seek the second opinion of an adequately qualified healthcare professional. I hope you guys have enjoyed that video. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to drop me a line in the comment section below. But for now, take care and stay healthy.